Hey PC gamers and welcome back to the PC Gamer Chat Log. I am Lauren Morton. And hey everyone, I'm Molly Taylor. And this week Molly and I are bringing on our associate editor Tyler Culp to talk about our white whale games. The unachievable games, the games we have never played but really absolutely should have and we have deep feelings of guilt like about these very specific things. This is not just the backlog, not just the oppressive guilt of the like huge looming backlog. These are very specific games that are like I call myself an RPG fan and yet <laughs> I should be embarrassed to have not played this thing um, or whatever other genres uh, we come from. But before we bring in Tyler to talk about that, Molly, what did you play last week? Um, I played a little bit. I'm actually quite surprised. I found I found some time between just life chaos to mm -hmm. play some stuff. Uh, I weirdly was like really in the mood to play a shooter which is yeah. so unlike me Uncommon. that is yeah that is not a a molly if you could go oh molly like shooters is is not the first thing a lot of people think of um but i did i played overwatch 2 oh, okay. uh just yeah despite all the, like the pve bullshit uh with all that getting like cancelled and stuff it's like that one shooter that I can actually like tolerate in my brain. So I played a little bit of that. And is then that like a comfort to... game for you? Like to play with yeah, friends? Kinda yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. It's, it's like a, it's a game that, you know, when I want to just shoot stuff and I don't really care about it as well, which I think helps. I don't care about being good. So mm -hmm. I just go in, I pee on people with Moira to heal them. And, <laughs> and I, I, I dip straight back out again, you know? I did that, and then I went to a retro gaming market over the weekend. Ooh. Super cool. There were loads of games. So we bought, like me and my boyfriend, we bought a few games. We bought some PS2 games, and we ended up playing quite a few of those over the weekend as well. So I played a lot of Crazy Taxi this weekend because uh, <laughs> we I love Crazy Taxi. Crazy Taxi. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about Crazy Taxi. Wow. Yeah, so I played a little bit of Crazy Taxi, and uh, I did a lot of watching my boyfriend plays San Andreas as well. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so it was really good. Like a little bit of retro gaming and a little bit of just a smidge of PC gaming as well. But it's been been a good week for gaming, I feel like. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that was me. How about you, Lauren? What did you get up to? Well, I was just coming off like a month of so much traveling. You know, I was at GDC and then I was on some personal trips too mm -hmm. last month. So I was just like, I was sitting at home reading a lot. And I think my update this week on things I played is the same as last week, which is that I am uh, was getting back into Sky, uh, Children of the Light, which came out on PC this week. Um, so I was kind of preparing for that, getting back into it. Um, and the the steam version the demo that had been up for a couple months was like having downtime for like a little more than a week like oh. 10 days or something uh leading up to like the proper launch so i had to pull it back out on my nintendo switch instead of my steam deck which i'd been playing on and my goodness uh picking up the nintendo switch after like getting accustomed to my steam deck it felt so tiny it's tiny just, just a, yeah just a little old thing um it, it did not take me long at all i mean i think when we first got our steam decks at the beginning of this year you and i were like oh yeah it's pretty big it's pretty chunky, but yep. I must have gotten used to it fast because, yeah, I picked up my Switch and I was like, oh, oh, she's <laughs> this doesn't um, feel right. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, uh, yeah, I, I got back into the Sky Children of the Light. I kind of uh, have been loosely sprinkling in hints to like some of my friends and my siblings like you should download it. It's free um, and I'll play with you because it's cross platform. I'll show you around. I'll take your little hand and we'll fly around together um Ooh. collect spirits all that stuff it's just uh it's such a um it's such a fun good cozy game i hope it takes off on pc we'll see what happens um but i, I do think it has the right mixture of like you know it is an mmo it's a non-standard mmo it's like it's it is a cozy mmo and it's free it's by a studio that people know really well um you can see in the past couple of weeks i i had an interview with their creative director, Genova Chen, um, while I was at JDC. So you can find some of the like uh, quotes from him and discussion that I had about designing the the multiplayer and the socializing space of Sky. Um, yeah, so I, I've very much been getting back into that kind of in preparation for the launch and like and having talked to him recently, it was all just kind of 
the perfect storm of stuff all together. So that's what I did last week. Yeah, I think that's it. That's all I played. I didn't play anything new. My my resolution no. has just Out died just as quickly <laughs> as any other yearly resolution. I thought, surely I can try a new game. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't matter what resolution you pick in January. It's really hard to stick to. It so. is. Wah, wah. Uh, all right, cool. Let's go grab Tyler Kolb. All right. Thank you for talking to us, Tyler, about all our, our varied genres of games and the the sort of missing holes in all of our genres. That's kind of what we've come to talk about. Like, I, I think sort of the prompt is I call myself a fan of blank and yet I haven't played blank. Do you have one like exemplifying example, like the the big one? I, feel I like call a myself a one. fan of this thing. Yeah. And yet. I feel like a big one for me, especially since now I've played like so much Diablo 4, is that I have mm. not really played Diablo 2 at all. I know a little bit about it. I think I, I used to, I remember being like really young and watching my stepbrother playing it, like watching the cutscenes, which terrified me because they were like extremely like violent back then. <laughs> uh, but I have never played the original, like the, the action RPG that started it all. I have not, I've never played, I don't know anything. Like people talk about like, oh, I, I wish this thing from Diablo 2 would come back like rune words or whatever, which is a mechanic that I don't even fully understand at this point. <laughs> and I, I don't, I'm too afraid to ask how it actually works. But uh, yeah, never, Diablo 2 is not a thing. And it's, it's funny because it feels like that is the game with any action RPG, not even just Diablo 4 that people mention constantly, but I just like, I've never I know nothing about it. I, I just, I, I play all the newer ones. So, cause like I played three, but never, never the original mm -hmm. or never the original that made everything popular, which feels like a giant gap to me because like, I don't know, it feels like it was like the blueprint for a lot of games these days. That's such a pressure that we all have, like no matter what genre you're a fan of is like the back catalog, like the, yeah. the classic hits of any genre. Cause that's going to be kind of my answer too. But before I get to that, Molly, what, uh, do you have one big example? Yeah. And it kind of, it's the same with, with you two kind of like an older one is for how much I love the final fantasy series. I have not played nine. I have not played nine. If Wes was, was here, Wes would kill me I feel like <laughs> it's like it's like the one that I always hear such good things about like more than eight more than ten it's like the one that was wedged kind of it's like right at the end of the ps1's lifespan I think like final fantasy 10 came out on the ps2 and I just I never played it and I really want to I keep telling myself that I'm gonna play it because I hear such amazing things about it. I feel like it's one that a lot of people, a lot of like fans ended up skipping though. I don't know why. Is it, yeah, I don't know what is it is. Is it kind of a deep cut? Like what is nine about? Like I know Final Fantasy 12 is the steampunk one. Everybody knows seven. Like which, which Final Fantasy is nine? I don't actually know. Nine kind of like goes back more towards like the medieval vibes, if I remember okay. correctly, like more of like the classic mm. fantasy that was sort of still in like one through six and then you know seven came along and it was like super futuristic this is the future it's green and black and then like eight came along oh, and no. it was still yeah like eight came along Matrix and it was era. Still kind of kind of like semi-futuristic i think and then nine kind of stripped it right back to the more like old school classic um yeah i'm so sorry if i'm totally wrong with that that that's my impression as someone who has never played nine <laughs> and i don't i don't know why that that turn may, maybe turn people off um but these days you hear really good things about it and it's one that i desperately desperately need to play <laughs> have you played every single other one like except uh, for nine? i played a lot of them i've played four six most of seven eight uh ten twelve thirteen all the thirteens <laughs> fourteen obviously uh fifteen and i got like halfway through sixteen so i played like a good chunk of them at this point um it's mostly just like the very 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 early ones that i that i haven't played i call myself an rpg fan and more specifically, I call myself a Bioware fan. I've not you touched do. Mass Effect ever. None of them. I've, none of them. No. no. Wow. That's surprising. I, it's in I your think defense. It's because tell me what my defense is, Molly. 
Oh, you're thank not... you. I knew I yeah. knew you would tell you're me the, the answer. <laughs> you're the same as me. Molly knows. Uh, yeah, I always <laughs> gravitate towards the, the fantasy games when I get the choice. Fantasy or sci-fi, swords or guns. I always go for the swords, the fantasy, whatever. So given those, like, you know, I discovered Dragon Age when I was like a late teenager, probably that's when the first one came out. And it, it felt like those were sort of like equal options. Like here are the big Bioware RPGs. You get you get fantasy or you get guns. And I was like, well, I'll play the fantasy one. And then sort of by the time uh, I got deeper into it and I was aware, I think, of Mass Effect, like I then very quickly was spoiled on Mass Effect. And I just sort of like knew all the things mm -hmm. that happened. And I was like, well, I was less interested in it anyway. I know it's a third person shooter, not a first person shooter, but I didn't have like high drive to get into it. And then I just sort of like was adjacent to that community, like that part of the internet and that fandom. I like witnessed enough of their stuff that I was like, okay, I don't need to play it myself. I kind of know the Shepard memes and I know how Mass Effect 3 ends and I know uh, which people everybody uh, I know about Garrus. Okay. Like I know about Garrus, uh, so I don't need to play Mass Effect. <laughs> that's what you gotta you know about. Free. That's that's it. <laughs> you were freed from being like extremely disappointed with Andromeda, so I guess maybe it is a plus that you just haven't played it. Yeah, exactly. So unless, I'm, I'm unless the next just, uh... next Dragon Age is also similar, but we'll see. Don't don't say Tyler, that, Tyler. Don't don't do that <laughs> to her. Crossing my fingers, man. Uh <laughs> So that's yeah, that's my big uh, my big hole in my back catalog is uh, I guess the way I phrased it to you guys was which game should you be kicked out of your genre for having not yeah. played? And I feel like I feel like Mass Effect for me that's fair. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys have one that's like it's so clearly your thing? And this might be like some overlap. We're creating a big Venn diagram of things here, but that's just so much your thing. You should love it and like just something has kept you from playing this one particular game that's like it's made for you and yet i still feel like my answer is just always dishonored too which just feels like exactly oh my, my god type of game. yeah because <laughs> i really like dishonored and but like i i didn't really care that much about like corvo that was his name right corvo atano or whatever the main character mm -hmm. guy i, I like I think Emily's design in the, in the sequel looks really cool. Her, her like abilities and stuff. Like I've seen bits of the game, but I've never, never touched it. And I, I even own it. Like it's one of those things just sitting in my steam library and I'm like, one day I will install you. But I, I don't know. Like I really love Dishonored. I really, I, I didn't like Deathloop as much. I didn't even like, obviously I didn't like Redfall. I don't think anybody liked Redfall, but it, this, it's like, I've, I've, I constantly am like hunting for a good, like arcane sort of style, you know, immersive sim game. And it's right there. It's Dishonored 2 probably, but I just have not touched and it. Yet. What other things have you played like in like the immersive sim type stuff? Like, have you been let down by others or there's things that you've really liked and so you just never wound up going to Dishonored I didn't too? really get into Prey, which was like their other one, right? That was a little bit closer mm -hmm. to kind of a traditional immersive sim. I didn't really enjoy that that much. Um, I never, it's funny because one of the other games that I have not played is like the original Deus Ex games either. Uh, so, I mean, there's there's quite a few, I guess, immersive sims that I haven't played. But in terms of like newer ones, I think... I feel like they're so streamlined in some ways that I don't really enjoy as much, like especially like the new Deus Ex games, which I have played. Those are just, they feel like regular first person shooters that maybe have some RPG elements. And I, I feel like there's a lot more creativity in some of the uh, the older stuff, but even Dishonored 2 is not even that old, but like, I really like all the like uh, abilities in those games, like the, the blink ability that lets you just like cross a bunch of gaps and yeah. climb up ledges and stuff like that. That stuff is like a blast to me. Cause I mean, as like, even like an overwatch player, it reminds me of stuff like, you know, playing tracer and stuff like that. So in a stealth environment, so it's really cool, but yeah, never, never really touched it. And also there's just a lot of like older immersive Sims that I have not ever like actually gotten into. I tried the new, like the thief remake they made it like several years ago mm. and that was ter terrible, terrible. <laughs> I'm like, the, I, I'm like clearly immersive Sims are like popular just because of the original, like of the original games that came out and pro probably not as many of the newer ones, especially since that genre just seems to be very different now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why maybe, maybe one? with the massive, yeah, I was going to say, like, maybe with the Immersive Sims, maybe it's one of those things, like, you know, when you play a game as a kid and you're like, oh my god, this is, like, the hardest thing ever. Like, it's so difficult. And then you go back and you play it as an adult. And it's like, 
this is so easy. Was I like a dumb kid? I bet that's, yeah, I'm sure that's the case. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if that's kind of the same thing where it's like, it was like such a cool concept, like at the time. And now it's just hard to make it like interesting in a world where you can do so much more with the medium. I don't know. I'm not dunking on immersive sims. I think immersive sims are really cool. I'm not intelligent enough to play them optimally uh, and to do goofy shit in them. But I think, I think for me, like, I think it, it, I know that, I know this will probably kind of end up being your answer as well, Lauren, to an extent. <laughs> but I think the Yakuza games, like, they oh, are yeah. so, they're, they, they're like molly coded. They're like designed for me. They're so molly coded. And yet I got like halfway through zero. I was having a blast. I was having a great time. And then I do this thing where I just don't pick up a game for like two days. And then I just forget that it exists. And it becomes yeah. infinite days since you've played. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like that text message that you're like, oh, oh no. I'll get back to that. And then like four days goes by and you're like, well, it's too late now to reply to this. And then you just never talk to that person again. Um, that's kind of how it is with me and the Yakuza series. And and I know, I know that I love the shit out of those games just based off what I played of like the 10 hours, 10, 15 hours, maybe even more I put into Yakuza 0. I know that game's for me. I know that series is for me especially now it's turn-based as well oh my god i'm i love a turn-based game i complain that that they don't do that as much as they should anymore mm. and yet i just i haven't played them i think it's overwhelming because i want to play them like in order so i like want to go through all the games and like do the yeah. story but oh my god that's so there's so many, many of them it's daunting yeah, yeah, there's a there's lot. So Imagine starting Final Fantasy yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Imagine if all the Final Fantasies mattered. Like that's that's how. <laughs> yeah. that's Molly, are you saying they be. don't? Yeah. Wow. I, they they matter. They just matter in a vacuum, away from all the other Final Fantasies. That's the beauty of them. Whereas Yakuza, it's like, oh, like you haven't played Yakuza five. Oh. Good luck Yakuza playing Yakuza 5 is probably six, the buddy. one you can skip. Oh, Actually. shit. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you, three, 3, 4, and 5 are kind of weird, and I feel like you can get the gist of them from, like, a good YouTube video walkthrough. I'll tell you that about the Yakuza series. But, like, 0 through 2 deserve to be played. And then the remakes of 3 through 5, uh, I feel like maybe, yeah, maybe just watch the Cliff Notes on YouTube, and then maybe play 6, and then get into 7. So I shortened yeah. the list for you. There's your filler episode uh, recap. Molly. Thank you so much. I am I'm a chronic filler episode watcher though, so Me too. I pro- yeah. I can't I, I I'm so bad for it. I'm so sorry. We're going off on a tangent. Colt, do I, you skip the beach arc and the, the school trip arc and never, all the other filler uh, arcs? Absolutely. No, Thank no, never. you. Yeah. No, I will I honestly there thought that was complain. like the whole point of the Yakuza games is they are like a filler episode <laughs> as a game. The whole game is a filler. It's yeah. true. <laughs> it's all side quest, man. It's all side quest. Very true. Uh, I think mine is, I, I haven't played the latest Yakuza game and I do feel bad about that. I don't know if I want to call that like something that's totally my jam and I haven't played because like, that's like the freebie answer. I think for me, it's got to be Morrowind um, mm. because I've played Oblivion and I've played Skyrim, of course. I've played the Fallout games, at least all the modern ones. Um, and Morrowind is the last like largely accessible like big Bethesda RPG or I shouldn't say accessible modernized and approachable um big Bethesda RPG and everybody says how weird Morrowind is and I liked the um the Morrowind expansion for the Elder Scrolls Online uh that area of the game as well and that just it's like Tyler you were describing with um Diablo people who've played that older game reference these systems yeah. that are like, Oh, they should bring X, Y, Z back. And I'm like, I wish I had played it. Yeah. So I knew. No what- idea what you're <laughs> about, it sounds, like, sounds cool. Yeah. It sounds so cool. And I wish I could be mad about it with you. Like they had, they have pole arms in Morrowind, like spear weapons that you could stab people with. And that hasn't been in since in an elder Scrolls game. I don't believe. Um, yeah. I don't think and so. And like, cause I, after playing oblivion 
I have strong feelings about the uh, the persuasion mini game. Um, that like weirdo pie chart deal where, but like yeah. once you understand it, you can go through it so fast, and it's so stupid, and it's this, it is so the most abstract version of what a conversation is. <clears throat> the, <laughs> it, it is you like you have four pie wheels, and in the the oblivion uh, chatting mini game where you can like flatter somebody, chat to them, like insult them or something. And it like, it turns every time you pick a choice and the piece of the pie is like partially filled up to show how much impact it's going to have. And you have to guess, it's been so long since I've played it, which like which thing each person values and you have to like use all four of them in the conversation, but in the most optimal order you can devise. That's like the most basic explanation I can give of it from what I remember. But anyway, it's so stupid, but I kind of think it, I kind of liked it. And it's not that I think a game should have that again, because it is a stupid system, but it has this, this nice place in my heart <laughs> that it existed. So I would like to go back to Morrowind and develop similar ridiculous opinions um, about a very old game, <laughs> I think. Are there any that you guys have resigned yourself to like, you're never going to play? Like, I believe that Tyler, you might get to Dishonored too, and Molly, you might play a Yakuza game to to the the end credits to and completion or a win yes, you <laughs> might play a yakuza game to completion <laughs> um do you have any that you're like i know i'm it's never gonna happen like this isn't it's yeah oh that's a good one i yeah. i think for me um oh, i feel so bad it's terraria oh it's, okay mm, yeah actually i almost put that I, on my list too yeah. Oh really? I love like I love like Don't Starve. I love Minecraft. I love Stardew. All these like kind of little crafting. Like I feel like Terraria has like similar like shares similar vibes with mm -hmm. with all of those. And I have I have tried in the past to get into it. Uh, I have booted the game up. I have I have attempted to play, and it's not because I don't like it, and it's not because I think the game is bad. Like the fact that it is. The, the developers cannot leave that game alone and people still eat that shit up is like a testament Wonderful. i feel like to just yeah it's just how like how great that is as a game i just can't i can't do it every single attempt i have i have had has failed and i don't know why and it sucks because i feel like i could be a terraria girly i could i totally could and that but it's um it's it's never gonna happen and i'm so sorry for me but it's a side scroller like for some mm. reason everybody we all played minecraft together and everybody was like play terraria and i tried it and i was like i can't do <laughs> i need 3d I, need to... I truly do i don't know what it is man i can do a 3d platformer like action platformer but like as soon as you put it in like 2d side scroll format i mm -hmm. like i don't know how to jump i don't know how to <laughs> it's it's it is a miracle that I played um, Ori in the Will of the Way or uh, Ori in the Blind Forest. Rather, I haven't played the second one. It's a miracle I got through that game, being a side scroll platformer. <laughs> but mm. I, I pushed through it. I think that's what's kept me away from Terraria. But you don't know what it is for you, Molly. Just just some unknowable factor. Maybe it is the two D thing. Because I mean, I love a two D game. I love a side scrolling game. Like those are things. Those yeah, like I those are things that I enjoy. I like all of those, but I I think in combination with like the crafting, maybe that's just not doing it for me in a way that I really thought that it would. Yeah, it's funny how your brain works, and it's like mm, you took away a no. dimension, and now I don't want you, it anymore. <laughs> you made it flat. I don't like it. Whereas like other <laughs> things like life sims. I actually am very partial to the top down like Stardew yeah. life yeah. and farm sims. And when they get put in 3D, I bounce off them more often, actually. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason. So I don't know. I don't have a grudge against 2D, just 2D platforming. Can't do it. I'm too stupid. I'm so sorry. That's I'm bad at it. So I mean I mean because like <laughs> one of the games that I have not played is also Hollow Knight. And some of the reason oh, yeah. is because it is like a side scrolling platforming thing, which I'm just not as good at as like a 3D action RPG thing. So I did yeah. try a bit of Hollow Knight, and I was like, mm. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, oh, and I know it gets harder than this, so yeah. I don't think it's going to be good for me. I should be good at this, and also I should like it, but something's not happening here, and I haven't touched it again on my Switch in since however long it's been since it came out. Whoops. Yep. I, 
my what if you resigned game, yourself to not playing tyler yeah my i mean it's mostly a series i feel like i'm never gonna play the metal gear solid series just because i know too much about mm. it at this point yeah okay i it, i feel like it's just like it's everywhere and like they all seem insane and that seems great <laughs> I, i'm happy for the people that are into them but and they seem cool yeah. maybe i i've always wanted to try them but i I, I mean, I did play five, but like every all the original ones that people love, I I just know so much about them at this point. I've seen them everywhere. Yeah, uh, I, don't think I need to play them. I feel like everything I've learned about Metal Gear Solid has been against my will. Like <laughs> I've I have never never ever played a single game of Metal Gear Solid, and I know far too much about that series. Yeah. I like. I There's remember. All, you, everybody knows someone that knows way too much about Metal Gear Solid. Right. So, I had a yes. <laughs> I had an ex boyfriend that was obsessed with the series, and I remember, I remember just like he was trying to tell me about all the different snakes, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, it's like a Dragon Ball fan telling me about all the Goku's. I just immediately <laughs> like my brain switches off, and I think I think on our team one time, I think I asked because there was a solid and a liquid snake, does that mean that there was a gas snake? And it turns out that the answer is is actually yes. It's, yes <laughs> yeah. I think I'm okay. <laughs> plasma snake? Do we have a plasma snake? Uh, that might be a thing, actually. I don't remember, but it could oh, be. Oh, I if it's it not, yeah. don't tell Kojima. <laughs> I mean, it's Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, like, they have thought of everything, so. Everybody I mean, like really does games. have a Metal Gear fan. Yeah. Friend. Yeah. I, I have a couple Metal Gear freaks in my life, and yeah, there are things that you learn about. A, the various snakes. B, Snake and Ocelot. Like, C, yeah. I don't know. There's, there's too much. I feel like that's kind of how I feel about Resident Evil also. Resident mm. Evil is mm. not within my genre. Like that's not. I don't typically go for the like the third person action campaign thing. Like that yeah. kind of falls in with. I don't know what were we talking about on a recent episode of the podcast, Molly. I don't remember. Well, we were talking about like um, it was when we were talking about Yellow Paint a couple weeks back, and we yeah. were discussing like the Tomb Raiders, the Uncharted, so that stuff. I don't usually play those games, so like. I don't feel like irresponsible for never playing a Resident Evil game, but I'm like every once in a while I look at people enjoying them and I'm like, maybe I would like a Resident Evil game. Like maybe I could just, you know, shot a like 10, 20 hour campaign and that would be a nice thing in my life. Something that's not a 60 hour plus RPG. Mm -hmm. I could learn the lore of Resident Evil and maybe that would be a nice addition to my I don't my think life. you want to, honestly. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> never mind i won't do it i'm so sorry it doesn't seem good it, there's too much there's there's like a, too many viruses too many zombie like adjacent things i mean they're not even on zombies anymore right like there's like weird like plant fungus stuff so clearly i'm oh, not God. the person who could tell you yeah i'll just forever remember it was um and this is also completely unrelated but the resident evil movie one of them uh welcome to raccoon city I will never be able to eject from my head the trailer they did for that movie that included a down key, like slowed down version of uh, of what's going on mm. um, in it. Great. Molly, I've showed this to you before and you probably I feel like you because... have. I feel like you totally have. Yeah, it's, it's something that can just like bounce off your brain if you're lucky. And I will never forget the like the like uh I forget even who's in Welcome to Raccoon City, but whatever, very serious. There's like fire and like the city is in turmoil. And in the background, oh, <laughs> <and like, laughs> good. a very high, equally high and low point of down key songs put into game uh, adaptation movie trailers. <laughs> it's both the best and the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, I think... The thing that I've resigned myself to never playing is um, older RPGs. Mm. Like there's, because again, it's so daunting. Um, I, I, at one point had like a long list written down on a whiteboard, like in an apartment that I was living in um, of like uh, Planescape Torment, the Fallout 1 and 2, Shadowrun games, like all these things um, that I'm just like, I'm never, I don't think I'm ever going to get to them probably. I, I think I've resigned myself to just, it's not going to happen. And it feels like this big missing chunk of like being an RPG person, but like yeah. I've played Baldur's Gate one and two. I've played Icewind Dale. Um, 
I've played, uh, those might be kind of the high points. I want to say Tyranny, but I know that's not a classic one. That's actually a newer one. It's just done in classic style. But yeah, I would, I would love to have played any, especially if I do anything, if I get to any of them, it will probably be the early Fallout games. Mm. I feel like that's, if I'm going to go back for something, it should be that since I've already done some like infinity engine stuff. Like I have the Baldur's Gate and I have Icewind Dale. Like it's okay if I don't do any other of those and I should do fallout instead. Yeah. Hmm. See, I can never Planescape get into Torment fallout. Is, is definitely one. I, I have wanted to play for a long time too. Yeah. It's probably Everybody also speaks so highly of it. Yeah. Right. And it's also probably one of the ones that like I would be made for me too. Like it feels mm-hmm. like it's, it's super like writing for it's a Tyler ass game. Yes. Yeah. Everybody says it's very story focused. Like yeah. it's, if you want the story focused campaign more than the crunchy numbers campaign. And I feel like much as I'm a story person and I'm not a crunchy numbers person, I think, and fallout, I think the early fallout games are very crunchy number uh, yeah mm-hmm. rpgs but i still feel like that's the thing i want to experience despite being less a sci-fi person fallout i do enjoy some fallout <laughs> it's true is there uh i didn't prep you guys for this so you're you're kind of like thinking off the top of your heads but is there like a game in your genre that you would say to someone else i don't know this is such a like common question as people talk about games like the the one thing that you think somebody should play out of like your whatever you want to define as like your given genre for this question like if they were coming in and being like these are the things i haven't played even though i'm an rpg player which one should i actually do like i should forgive myself the rest but this one this one i should do what would you oh what would you tell no them? um oh maybe i would tell people to play Nero automata that is okay. that yeah. is the game yeah that is the game i would tell people to play it's one of those games that, like, if we're talking RPGs, that is that is the the if RPG. for RPGs, you could pick a different genre. But yeah. if we're talking, if we're talking like like JRPGs, which is something that I mm-hmm. you know have 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 enjoyed quite a lot over my years, uh, it's one of those games I wish I could go back and play for the first time. I love that game. It is like so pretty looking. It plays mm-hmm. amazingly. It's like. The, the way that game feels to play and just like interact with the world like I don't think any any game I've played quite makes me feel like as giddy as Nier Automata does just like yeah. the way it's so it like so effortlessly effortlessly like switches as well from like like open world exploration and then suddenly you're in like a little 2d side scrolling segment and then suddenly it's like a little top down like shooting segment oh my god there's like so much to do it's such a fantastic game to just be in and be experiencing um and in my opinion that's a game that that everyone should play because i and i feel like everyone everyone knows near automata at this point just because 2b is in absolutely fucking everything so many crossovers um, yeah. and her ass just keeps getting bigger and bigger progressively with like every <laughs> collaboration that she that she stars in um, so go back and check out her origins and see see how small her butt really say, is go back and check out her original ass <laughs> yeah go back and check her original ass her original <laughs> the og could considerably smaller than recent collaborations ass <laughs> we'll not have this ass revisionism happening in here <laughs> the 1.0 ass i can't so okay. the 1.0 ass yeah <laughs> tyler I, do you have a must play yeah this is hard uh i think I think all the people that have been like amazed at how weird and like fun like Alan Wake Two is should go back and play Control. I feel like not enough people play Control. Ooh, oh, okay, it's, yeah. Control is like so good. Like it's like a, I mean it's like a third person like action game, but it's got all the remedy stuff in it. It's even though it's like not, it, it has some horror stuff into it. Like like I know that's one thing that holds like keeps people away from the Alan Wake games is like maybe the horror elements, and it does have some of that, but it's more like, it's a lot more like actiony, but it, it's basically like a big building with a bunch of monsters that, and a bunch of like SCP stuff in it. Right. So it's a lot of like weird, like a fridge that I think there's like a, there's a fridge where it's like, you have to keep staring at it. And if you look away, it like violently kills you. So it's oh. like, and the, there's like weird stuff, like weird haunted what? objects 
in this game and it's it like it has like telekinesis you can just throw rocks at people you don't even have to shoot half the time it's just like it's such a fun game that is like goofy in that like kind of weird kind of campy remedy style it it has amazing art direction like i feel like it's still one of the best looking games i've ever seen and i just feel like yeah not a lot not enough not a lot of people but ended up playing it and i think it's incredible like it's it's definitely like one of my favorite games of all time i think Mm -hmm. i the easy answer if molly hadn't already said it would be yakuza zero because i do Mm -hmm. really feel like if, if you love anything and I don't even know what to say. If you love X, you should play Yakuza. I don't know what the answer to that is. It's not It's not necessarily JRPGs, because that's not what it is for most of the series. Um, I don't know. If Frankly, I told people, a few different people this, if you love Dragon Age, if you love Bioware stuff, like if you love story and like complex characters and melodrama, like Yakuza is different, but it has that like get it's attached there. to your faith and never let go grab them yeah. around their torso and shake them around because they're your very favorite doll um <laughs> yeah because that has those qualities for sure uh but if i were not to say that i would probably say and this isn't even like what i consider my home genre but shadow tactics blades of the shogun um oh. that Mimi games um which I, I get is shutting down right they said that uh their recent pirate game was going to be their last which is unfortunate because all of their stealth tactics have been really great um so if you love those tactical things if you love like hitman um it's not like hitman because it's like it's a party management pu- but it still has the puzzling quality um shadow tactics is really great that was like maybe maybe their first one i think mm-hmm. and just like surprisingly good so enjoyable beautiful it gives you those great moments of like setting up a three-way kill and having it like execute all at the same time because of your people with all their different abilities like all in the same place great game continue to recommend Ooh. it i keep fighting for it to be in our top 100 every year um <laughs> maybe this year is the year no, it uh, it had been. It it, it comes oh. in kind of low on the top hundred. It might have fallen off this year in favor of other things, but like for several years, it's actually been on. Um, you, and then okay, other side of that same coin. What from your like your big home genre or like things would you tell people to skip and be like, yeah. yo, don't feel bad. You don't. You just don't play it. Go do something better. Don't play this game. Don't go. Back I can't for it. wait to be a hater. I'm gonna be such a. <laughs> fucking hater right now all you little osu freaks i don't know why you enjoy that goddamn game okay i love my rhythm games i love my rhythm games i cannot stand osu osu is like the like if you want a free game with like with like fan made charts and the charts are actually good go play step mania go play step mania don't go play osu i don't i don't know what it is I freaking hate this game. I feel so bad because when when I tell people that I play rhythm games, they're like, oh, like Osu. And I'm like, no. No, not like Osu. I'm like, not like Osu. How dare you? I feel really bad because it's 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 the game people think about when you tell people that you're into rhythm games. It's like that and Friday Night Funkin' these days, Mm -hmm. which also, for how much I like Friday Night Funkin', is not a good rhythm game. Um, That (laughs) that may have changed. It was not a good rhythm game when I played it, even though I really liked it. The music is great. The art style is great. The actual gameplay needed some work. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say don't play Osu. Go to your local arcade. Go to your round one. I know there's a I know there's a ton of them in America. Go to your local round one and go play some actual good rhythm games or else. <laughs> so that's me. I'm sorry to like the genuine like millions of OC fans out there. I But they're I'm playing really a bad really game, sorry. is what you're saying. Yeah, so. you're you're playing a bad game. Yeah, you're a fan <laughs> of a, a game that's trash, so uh... <laughs> I, I mean, Osu, I, I've never played Osu, but it looks, it never looked, it just looked like a weird, I don't know, it looks like a rhythm game without any, like, fun in it. Like, it just looks like it yeah. doesn't have anything going on. I don't know. That's I how it, it feels I guess it really want to just play a bunch of songs. Yeah. I guess because there's, like, a community with it, but yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't know. I feel, okay, mine maybe is also a little bit controversial. I feel like um, you can skip Dark Souls 2. 
I, I feel like Tyler. Tyler, that was my first dark it's it's, it's annoying it's i think like i mean honestly i do like parts of it but i feel like i always tell people because i've gotten a lot of friends into like the dark souls series and it's like play start it's like try dark souls 2 definitely give it a shot but like be you're you are you have the like permission to skip it because it's not i don't know I've, it's never been my favorite i think it i understand why people like it but i just don't i think it's not i think it doesn't have as much like to me, like the original game, and then even the third one, and I've obviously now like Elden Ring, which is technically not a Souls game, but it, they feel like they have such a strong vision, and two just feels like a little bit all over the place, which seems to be some of what, like its development just sort of caused that because it was kind of a mess. But I feel like that game can only really be appreciated if you like are so interested in the series that like you want to go back to it, kind of thing. But mm-hmm. I feel like playing them then in order is a bad idea. <laughs> like the two is just like, it's going to frustrate you. It's really long. And I just feel like you might as well just move on to three. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Fair enough. That was yeah. my first Dark Souls game, but just as a matter of like- it, <laughs> Well, you made a mistake, it, so. It came out and I, had, I didn't know about Dark Souls and somebody was like, play Dark Souls too. And I was like, okay. Um, Never, you shouldn't my... trust- that person now like they, yeah, they let no. you stray yeah no more game wrecks um <laughs> mine i don't know if this is controversial or not but the original witcher um mm. you don't need to go back and play i tried the first that. witcher game not worth it yeah no <laughs> it, it is uh, respectfully I, I guess as respectfully as i can say it was ugly and yep. it was clunky as all get it's out. It was super clunky. buggy. Even though it's oh, like it, playable now, but like it's not good. Barely. It, it's, it's a bit of a hassle to get it playable. I had like horrible bugs, like constant crashes to desktop. And like the, the level up screen in the original Witcher constantly bugged out on me where I could not click. It, I would get into mm. level up screen. I would not be able to interact with anything and I would have to force quit the game on top of all the times that it was like actually just crashing to desktop on me. Um, The voice acting is not great. I truly thought, I truly thought going from Witcher 1 to Witcher 2 that they had replaced the voice actor for Geralt. But no, that's Doug Cockle all the way through. No, that's him. It just something about how he was directed (laughs) in his performance in the first Witcher or how they decided to cut the audio together was awkward um and he uh his talent in later witchers is not is not present there in the first one tragically uh yeah it's it's a clunky game that's another one where like like you're saying tyler if you're really invested in the series if you really want to experience all of the witcher okay go play it after you already care enough about the series exactly to force yourself through that experience i played them starting with the witcher one right before the witcher three came out i was like i'm gonna play the first two and i'm gonna start with the first one and i muscled through it but for what and for what (laughs) having strong opinions about tris versus yennefer that is for what that is what i got out of playing the first witcher game that's the only reason i'll tell anybody to do it is if you if you think like you like tris better uh, go back and play the first witcher game actually you'll see the truth you'll know the truth Um, (laughs) But otherwise, you can absolve yourself of that. You don't need to go back for it. You can you can play Wild Hunt and just enjoy it because it's a very good game. The Witcher. There's definitely a reason why like the Witcher series really blew up with two. I feel like there's nobody yes. cared about one really. Yes, I mean clearly it started something for CDPR. Yeah. Like clearly that that is what started their success. But yeah, it uh the the difference in quality between one and two is startling. It sure. was startling when <laughs> two came out. That's the craziest part yeah. too, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what's something that you like fully should have played, wanted to play, and now you're just not going to do it because it got spoiled for you? Either like the story or I, you, I guess mostly story spoilers is kind of the thing. Or like it, maybe it got spoiled for you in some other way. Like you had that experience of a friend trying to play it with you and just uh, not letting you learn it on your own. Molly, you and I have those experiences sometimes. And any kind of spoiling experience. No. I'm actually... Despite the fact that I have had people, you know, kind of be a little handholdy when I play my video games sometimes, I am surprisingly good at avoiding spoilers. Um, oh, there was a game that got spoiled for me and I never finished it. Um, I spoiled the ending of it 
for myself by accident. That was L.A. Noir. Oh, I okay. I accidentally, yeah, I spoiled the ending of L.A. Noir for myself. Uh, totally, just totally by mistake. And then accidentally spoiled it for somebody else because I tried to whisper to someone in a Minecraft <laughs> server that we were in. And I tried to whisper and I just posted it like into the chat instead. Um, and what that a person, sentence. I, yeah, I, <laughs> I spoiled I L.A. Noir. I whispering in Minecraft. <laughs> in yeah, Minecraft. thinking I was whispering in Minecraft and I wasn't. And I just blurted it out. And um, the person that I spoiled it for was very unhappy with me, uh, understandably. But yeah, I never finished it. I think I was enjoying the game. And then I kind of saw the ending and I was like, ah, I, I, no, I have no desire to carry on to the end now. Like this is, this is fine. But um, apart from that, I am like very, very good at not getting spoiled. I only got Mass Effect 3 spoiled for me like last year when I was editing someone's work it's on team. Yeah, yeah, it surprising. took ages. And even then, um, the ending of that game has fallen out of my brain. So I'm still safe. I'm still good. I still technically do not know the ending of Mass Effect 3. Um, I'm, I'm safe and I wish to remain ignorant. That would make me really happy. <laughs> I think Mass Effect is mine too. I, I did definitely. For all the other reasons I said why I probably wasn't going to bother playing Mass Effect at any point. Also, you know, cultural osmosis. I know the ending of Mass Effect 3. So I'm like, it's fine. I don't need to play it myself at this point. Like, yeah. I'm trying to think if there's any other things that like I've spoiled for myself in one way or another. And then I'm like, well, I don't need to play it now. But that's like, that's the big one. All the other big like story RPGs of my time, the fallouts and the whatnots. I mean, I guess like when I go back and play it, like if I get to play the original fallouts, like I do pretty much know the plots of those and yeah. how they go. Like, they kind of echo those so many times too, so it's sort of like that kind of know what's happening. It'd be like trying to watch a Star Wars movie at this point. You kind of know <laughs> like where it's going. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I for me it's like it's well, it's Metal Gear, like all of those games. I just know too much about them. But then also it's Fallout New Vegas specifically, because like that's another one that people say that mm. I would probably really like. But I've heard like people are so effusive about that game that I kind of just knows know. how New Vegas ends. I know all the factions. I know how it ends. I I just know every storyline. I mean, I've also watched like parts of playthroughs and stuff too before. So right. that game, I just know so much about that. I there's no reason for me to really play it at this point. Yeah. Mm. Is there Which any that you're? About, but... Is there any that you're gonna play like even though it's been spoiled for you? You're like, uh, I mean, I guess that's kind of what we've been talking about. Like some of the older games in our catalog yeah. is like, yeah, I know about these yeah. games, but I'm gonna play them anyway. But is there one where you're like, I literally already know everything about this, but I do I want to play it. <laughs> myself well it's tan tangential um i had persona 5 spoiled for me oh, uh okay. like the mm. day that i got it the day that i got my copy wow. of persona 5 so like the day it came out or the day after it came out um i'm i'm like not so much these days now that my work is on the internet and reading comments gives me the fear i used to have such a habit of like then no, I do still do it actually with everything but job stuff. Like if I watch a video, if I like see like a tweet, I am so guilty of immediately opening the comments and just like seeing what everyone else is saying. I'm such a comment reader. I love reading the comments on stuff. And it was a trailer for Persona 5 on like the official Sony account or the official PlayStation account on Facebook. This was so th this was like literally like 2017 when persona 5 came out and i looked at the comments on this trailer for persona 5 and somebody spoiled one of the major plot points as i was like an hour in mm. and i was yeah i was so oh, cool. bummed out but i i carried on anyway i carried on playing and i'm you know it would have been cool to have not had that spoiled but I'm glad that I plowed on regardless because it's a good game. Mm -hmm. Do you have any like that, Tyler? I'm trying to think of like, I mean, I guess like, honestly, like Morrowind is probably one of those for me, like, because yeah. I just know so much about it too, but it also just seems like it's still worth like digging into. 
uh, for all the reasons you said, it just it's the weird one. It seems to be mm -hmm. like the the one that people constantly talk about that is not returned in any way, other than I guess like the the Elder Scrolls Online. So which I also yeah. didn't play that either. So there's that. I think. Um, Another one that maybe would be something that I would play despite knowing so much about it, and which is I, I, maybe this is like a cop out a little bit because it's not really about the story stuff, but like like Monster Hunter games, like especially like mm. World and stuff. Like I probably just play the newer one when it comes out at this point, but like playing those games with friends feels like the way to do it. So it probably doesn't really matter that I know like the the like final like boss fight or whatever. Like I know all the different like monsters in that game, so doesn't really bother me. I'd probably still just play it anyway. Yeah. I, I've managed to not know like the plot of Morrowind. I really don't. So that's nice, at least. I think maybe one thing is like various Assassin's Creed games, mm. which yeah. Yeah. I haven't like played a ton of the newer, I, I've played almost none of the newer Assassin's Creed games, despite how much people enjoy them. Um, but like, as you say, Molly, because of work, because of reading like our colleagues, uh, stories and things like that like i kind of i definitely know things that happen in valhalla if not like also odyssey and origins but like i still might want to play them um even despite that uh and then i don't know i feel like there was one other thing potentially but i think yeah i think maybe assassin's creed various games i don't know i kind of fell off after four that's probably the last one i took seriously was yeah, I fell I off after like three, three, I think, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, cool. Thanks, guys. We Wait, Ooh. recap quickly on the oh. games that people should actually play. These are these mm -hmm. are the, the ones that we felt like they should actually play. Molly, what was yours? Nier Automata. Yes. Yes. Cole, what was yours? His control. Yes. Mine was either Yakuza 0 or, uh, oh my god, what did I say? Shadow, Shadow Tactics, Blades yeah. of the Shogun. Yes. Those yeah. are like, if you haven't hit those and those are your, your home genres, correct that. Go back for them. <laughs> but but you don't need to play the original Witcher and you don't need to play Dark Souls 2 and no. you don't need to play Osu. And don't, don't play Osu. Go play something Forgive better. yourself. Free <laughs> yourself. Those can come off the backlog, according to us, the, the eminent experts <laughs> of our own genres. Beautiful. Thank you guys for just uh, coming in and uh, admitting to your great sins um, <laughs> of of your personal. We, have to, we were coming back in a year, right, to make sure we played the games that we <laughs> skipped. Oh God, accountability? Yeah. Yeah. Never, yeah. absolutely not. <laughs> accountability for the backlog? We can't. We can't commit to something like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Definitely cool. Thank you guys. Then uh, you can always find uh, more of. Uh, all three of our writing at PCGamer.com, all of the usual news, reviews, guides, opinions, all that good stuff. And you will, as usual, be able to talk with Molly and I about this week's episode at forums.pcgamer.com. So until next time, guys, thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.